we were stalling. Uh, we, are, we want to welcome you on this very, very special day. Uh, it is Mother's Day, and uh, you, many of you are with your mother, or you have brought your child. We have a baby dedication. Uh, I don't think one of the couples and the baby is here yet, and so we may rearrange. Oh, here we go. <laughs> We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We have, we have some announcements, and then we're going to have a baby dedication, and we're glad you're here. Uh, first of all, let me say something that I should have said last Sunday, and I failed to do. Uh, it went out in an email, and you know, you assume things, and you just forget uh, when you get a certain age. Uh, anyway, uh, we want to welcome Missy Davidson as our children and youth ministry director interim. You voted on her, and I will let the cat out of the bag. It was unanimous. And uh, I doubt very many people could get a unanimous vote. Uh, and uh, so we welcome Missy. She has started working and already doing a wonderful job of coordinating uh, the children and youth uh, activities and already talking with people, and we're going to have a full slate this summer. Uh, we're going to call some things off, but we're going to add some things, and we're going to try to keep people informed, and uh, Missy is the point person. Uh, later in the service, she will be uh, reading scripture for us and having a prayer. In case you ha do not know who she is, she, you will know who she is then. So, Missy, welcome. Uh, welcome to you if you're visiting with us. We're glad you're here. And uh, some of you are here because of this special day. And uh, it is a very special day. Uh, but it's a bittersweet day for some who have lost loved ones. Uh, in recent years or in long past or for some whose mother perhaps was not the ideal mother uh, so uh, we uh, we are here to celebrate mothers and to celebrate parenting and so we're glad you're here to worship with us uh, I have also been asked to say uh, in case you wish to take your child to the nursery later this morning, uh, you're welcome to do that. Someone is in the nursery. It would be through this door and all the way back. Just follow the noise and you'll find <laughs> rocking chairs and hopefully no crying babies. Okay? Uh, as we begin today, before we have uh, our baby dedication, our call to worship, let us have a prayer. May we pray. God, we thank you for this wonderful day that we can come to your house and worship. We thank you for our mothers and what they have meant to us and do mean to us. We thank you for our grandmothers and even our great-grandmothers and those who've gone before so that, so that we can be nurtured and guided in your faith, in faith in you. Be with us today as we worship you. Uh, calm our hearts, guide us, and guide our thinking, even as you continue to love us. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Okay, this is it. If I will ask the parents uh, to come to the front, oh my goodness. Isn't this wonderful? I tell you what, aren't they well behaved <laughs> so far? Take your bulletin, and, uh, and I'm going to, uh, first of all, let me introduce. This is Landon. Hi, buddy. And uh, parents, John and Chelsea, of course, grandparents are here today, Kathy and David. We're glad to have you. Uh, not sure about the others, but we're glad to have family with us today. Uh, Charlotte, this is Charlotte. Does she go by Charlotte or Paige? Charlotte? Well, hi there. How are you? Uh, yes, Trevor and Paige and uh, big sisters, Betty Lou and Georgia Kate. And, of course, parents and grandparents, we're glad you're here. Uh, we're going to have this dedication service, and we call it a baby dedication service. But it's a little more than that. It's a parent baby dedication service, and it's a congregation dedication service. So I say to the parents today, in presenting your children to the Lord, do you promise in dependence on God's grace and partnership of this church to teach them the truths of the Christian faith, faith, to set a Christian example before them, to bring them up in the ways of the Lord Jesus, and to encourage them to accept Jesus Christ as Savior under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We do. We do. Good. And to the congregation, I say, do you as members of this church Promise to partner with these parents in the teaching and training of Landon and Charlotte that they may be led in due time to know Christ as Savior. Confess him in baptism and follow him in discipleship. If you accept this responsibility, would you please stand? I'm going to have a prayer of dedication and I will say this before you walk off. I have a gift for the child, so don't leave quickly. Uh, may we pray. Uh, first of all, before I pray, I would say to these babies and these children, uh, together with your parents, you are loved dearly. Uh, this congregation cares about you. Uh, and so we dedicate you to God. May we pray. Lord, these tiny hands of these babies are so trusting. They are so innocent, and yet they will grow up in a world that has been tainted by hatred and greed and sin and darkness. And so we pray for their protection. We give them to you, Lord. The future seems so uncertain, and yet we look at these children, and mysteriously we have hope. We pray that you would guide their way, make their path straight, and give them strength. We give these little ones to you as parents and spiritual leaders and teachers and mentors and friends. Lord, we pray that you would help us give them a sense of security that can only come from you. We pray especially for the parents and grandparents of these children. We pray that you will guide and uphold them so that they may provide loving care, wise advice, and a positive example. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. God bless you. Can, do you have enough hands? Yeah. You don't? Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. And they behaved. Isn't that great? Let's all stand, if, if you're able, get a bulletin or a hymnal, and let's join our voices together this morning.
morning. Turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. If you don't have your Bibles with you, there's one in the pew back in front of you. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, <clears throat> but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to gather here in this place today to celebrate mothers, to celebrate these babies, just to celebrate together as a congregation, as a family. I pray that you will bless our time together. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a special, extra special treat for you this morning that uh, is not in the bulletin. I had the privilege yesterday of marrying, uh, I should say performing the ceremony uh, for Cody and Caitlin. Uh, and they are going on their honeymoon tomorrow. And they're in church today. And they wanted... And they wanted to have an opportunity to speak to you. And after they speak, I may not be able to talk. So Katie and uh, Caitlin, Caitlin and Cody, Katie and Caitlin, uh, come and tell us what you want to tell us. By the way, <laughs> I had the opportunity of baptizing this young couple when they were teenagers, when I was here before. And so it's quite a blessing. And if you were in the wedding yesterday, you notice a couple of times I got a little emotional. I thought, these are my kids. <laughs> and I was so blessed to be part of the service. And, and you'll be blessed to hear what they're going to say. Good guy. <laughs> okay. Yesterday, I had my dream wedding right here in this church with my family and my extended family that I have come to love dearly, all of you. I know in my heart that my wedding to Cody could never have happened without the love and kindness you gave to a young boy whose family life was in free fall. In 2016, on my 16th birthday, Cody and I had our first date. My mom, Lisa, worked right here at First Baptist Church, and we had no idea the importance the members of this church would play in our lives, 
most especially in Cody's future. As some of you know, Cody was in a really bad home situation, one that offered him no future. Members of this church banded together and got him out of that home, accepted him into this church, showered him with love and kindness, and showed him how to overcome hardships with grace and dignity. A child living with, with and and trauma needs to feel safe and loved. They need food and clothing, a sense of belonging, and the hope they can be better. They need role models to teach and support them. They need to know they too can be a good human being. You gave Cody all this and more. Because of your love and God's grace, Cody is a good man, a kind man, a loving man, and a man who believes love and kindness can change the heart and a life of a child in need. A man who believes in God and miracles because he is proof both are real. Because of you, Cody and I know firsthand that love and kindness are never wasted. They always make a difference. They bless the one who receives and they bless those who give. You blessed Cody and myself, and we can never repay you, but we pay it forward in our lives today. I want to include a wonderful lady who is not here with us today, a woman who really went the extra mile for Cody in all ways, Juanita Christian. Juanita picked Cody up, took him to church, took him in her home, and her heart without reservation. She loved him dearly, and he loved her. Her son, Bill, and daughter-in-law, Amanda, who came every time the call was made, day or night, to pick him up and get him out of a bad situation at home. To each one of you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for opening your hearts to Cody Marcy. I know without a doubt he is the man God intended him to be because of your love and grace in his life. Good morning. Uh, before I read this, I want to start off with those that were able to make it to the wedding. Uh, I hope y'all had a fun time. I sure did, being one of one of the two stars of the wedding. So uh, I hope everyone had a fun time. All the food was good, and everyone's here the next day, happy. And uh, those that couldn't make it, and everybody else in general that's here, um, thank you for making it happen for us to be married here in this church. Uh, that was more than a gift, and I couldn't thank you enough, honestly. Uh, I was given the script to read, and it describes everything how I feel emotionally very well, except there are a couple of words I would have never used in my dictionary, so I changed it a little bit, so to, to my grandmother that helped write this out for me, uh, I apologize. I'm going to change it just a little bit. My heart is so full standing here in front of you, and I am not sure words can adequately describe my feeling for this church and its members. First to Caitlin, the love of my life, the person who entered my life out of nowhere and suddenly made the world make sense. She is the reason life changed in so many ways, but most importantly, she brought me here to you. Sometimes we are living hardships we cannot see tomorrow, but God always knew my tomorrow would start in February of 2016, the day I met you. I look around and see so many faces who went the extra mile for me. Some counseled me, some hugged me, some gave me food, others gave me clothes, but all of you gave me acceptance, kindness, and love. As I said, words simply are just not enough today. Not every child is blessed with loving parents and a wonderful home. Far too many of us are raised in hurt, and we learn only survival. We react differently than children raised in love and kindness. Our experiences, good and bad, make us who we are, but we need people like you to lead us into the light. Simply put, you are the reason I believe that there are goodness in people. There's an incredible amount of hurt in my first 15 years, but there is so much happiness in the past seven years here. Dates with Caitlin, being accepted by her family, church, picnics and trips, hot dogs and s'mores, enough food, clean clothes, decent shoes, a clean bed to sleep in, turning on a light, having water to take a bath, being in church on Sunday morning and being baptized by John Leper, and just the comfort of knowing when it got really bad, someone from this church pulled in my driveway and helped me out. Not just once, but many times. These may seem like little things, and to most people they probably are, but to me they are everything. 
I am who I am today in large part thanks to the members of First Baptist Church. Without you, I could never have married Caitlin, joined the military, reconnected with my family, found a good job, have a beautiful home, or made huge dreams for my life. Life is not fair, but it always put the right people in our path if we only took up and if we only look up and see them. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for holding on. Thank you for leading me to the love of Jesus. Thank you for showing me goodness wins. Thank you for being my compass and my light. I love each of you dearly, and please know your faith in me is why I'm standing here today. Thank you.
Well, I don't need to preach, but I will. Sometimes uh, it's the surprises that mean the most. Apparently, many people in this church were here for Cody and Caitlin when they needed it most. Well, I'd like to say, Cody and Caitlin, you were here when we needed to hear that word a lot. Uh, it's Mother's Day. Which reminds me of the story of the preacher that preached on his first Mother's Day. He was a young preacher. He wasn't even married yet. And he preached on the title, Everything You Need to Know About Being a Parent. <laughs> and then he got married. And he had a child. And then he preached on some answers to struggling parents. And then a few years later, uh, the children by then grew up to be teenagers. His Mother's Day sermon was tips on being a parent. Uh, I'm unsure of what to say, so I'm going to point us to Scripture today because it's more than tips. It, it's how can we leave a legacy. You know, I, uh, I was interim pastor at at First Baptist Church, Winchester, Kentucky, uh, I should say Williamsburg, Kentucky, you know, get those W's mixed up in my head, uh, right next door to Williamsburg Church uh, was what's now called the University of the Cumberland. We called it Cumberland College for years. And I used to go walking on campus, and everywhere I walked, I would see a plaque or the name on a building of somebody that had given lots of money and they had a plaque or had a building named after them or a program named after them. That, that's important to do because many, many people gave great sums of money to do their part to provide financial resources to make uh, an ongoing difference in the world. We as parents and grandparents want to make a difference in the future of our children and grandchildren. In a sense, we, we want to leave something to the next generation. I would suggest to you that 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 is a verse that we need to pay attention to. These three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And just before that, Paul talks about all these great things in the world that will one day pass away, but these three things are going to last. Now, we cannot guarantee our children's future. We, we cannot guarantee what's going to happen in their lives, but we can give them faith, hope, and love and make a difference in their future. I, many years ago, I attended a football game held at a school in Georgia. It was an academy, and they asked a chaplain of a local institution to come and have a prayer before the football game. I know you don't have prayers much before football games, but he had a, a, a wonderful prayer, but I'll never forget what he said. I, I don't remember all of his words, but, you know, it was the usual prayer at a, sportings event, a sporting event. I pray for the safety of the players. I pray for wisdom. I pray for this good thing and that. And then he said, and Lord, if there is an edge, let it be with our team. <laughs> I, I thought, yeah, that's kind of the way life is, isn't it? Uh, my prayer for you and your family today, if, if there's an edge, let it be with our family. And we can give them an edge by providing love, by providing faith, by providing hope. We can leave them a legacy of faith. Faithfulness to God, integrity in life, faithfulness to family members. Let me tell you, 
about my legacy. Merle and Nita Leper. Now, now you might think the name Leper is a funny name. You might say it sounds kind of like a disease. But back where I grew up, in the small town, in the country, the name Merle and Nita Leper meant a lot because it meant integrity. It meant faith in God. It meant a solid family, somebody that paid their bills and their word was their bond. Faith in God, faithfulness in relationships, integrity in life will give your children and grandchildren an edge. You can leave them all the money in the world. You, you, can, you can leave all kinds of money to endow universities or other institutions. But if you haven't left faith, you might not have left anything that lasts. Leave them a legacy of faith because it will last. And hope. I remember that hymn, number 406, A Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And the refrain over and over, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and his righteousness. We, we invest our children and our grandchildren with a lot of hope. We, we hope things turn out right. But if we hope in Christ... We have an edge that is a whole lot more solid than our wishfulness and that our hopefulness for them. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. But then, a legacy of love. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Paul says, let love be genuine. Some of you have heard me tell this story. My wife and I experienced it. We had some friends, and my wife, uh, we received catalogs in the fall, and my wife said, let's get this couple friend of ours a little holly bush. Look at it in this, in this catalog. It says it's guaranteed to have holly berries at Christmas. I said, that sounds good. Let's just order it. And so we did. It came. The holly berries were in a little plastic bag with instructions <laughs> that, said, that said, when Christmas comes, you can put these on the holly bush. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Let love be genuine. Family members know if your love is fake or not. Let love be genuine. What, what does it mean for love to be real and genuine? Jesus said not too long before his death, a new commandment I give you, that you love as I have loved. The old commandment was love your neighbor as you love yourself. But the fact is, I don't love myself very well sometimes. And if I love my neighbor like I, like my, like I love myself, it might not be very good. But the role model for love, Jesus said, is love as I have loved. It was a self-sacrificial love. It was a self-giving love. Even the love that went to the cross. Well, permit me an aside. Peanuts cartoon. Schroeder, that piano-loving intellectual who is sometimes interrupted with a deep question by his admirer, Lucy. Lucy says, Schroeder, do you know what love is? He stops playing the piano. He stands. He speaks formally. Love. Noun, to be fond of, a strong affection for, or attachment or devotion to a person or, post, or persons. She sits down, or he sits down. She is stunned and puzzled. She looks away 
walks away and murmurs, on paper, he's great. Uh, love on paper is great. God so loved the world that he just didn't write a book. And he didn't just send us a book. He sent us a person in Jesus Christ. Love in a person. And, and if we love our family, we don't just love them on paper. We love them in fact. And we are self-giving to them. The love of God is greater for than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Could we with all the ink the ocean fill, could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk of earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. God's love is all-encompassing, and somehow, if our faith and hope and love are placed in Him, and if we can, with His power, live out that, faith and hope and love. It will make all the difference in the world for your family, your children, your grandchildren, and others. And, and, and sometimes you may not have children, but somebody like a Cody might come along and you can say, I can reach out and I can share my faith and hope and love. We are all here for such a time as this. Let us claim the opportunity in our family and in our relationships to exhibit faith, hope, and love. These three, everything else is going to pass away, and they'll be here, and you'll make a difference. May we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to exhibit faith and hope and love. Teach us, guide us, strengthen us to do that today and in the days ahead. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. If you're here today and you would like to make a decision, we invite you to do that and share it with us at the front as we stand and as we sing. day in the house of the Lord. We're so glad you are here, uh, particularly if you are visiting with us or haven't been here in a while. Uh, we have some people that haven't been able to be here, but they made a special effort, and they're here today, and we're glad. Uh, several announcements before we leave. Uh, first of all is, you're all dressed up. You might want to get your picture made. Uh, Missy, a person of many talents, is going to be taking pictures. Uh, my wife and I, my wife is here. Good to see you, Connie. <laughs> Don't leave without me. Uh, 
Uh, we had our picture made this morning. She was choking me. <laughs> It'll go viral. I know it will. I know it will. Uh, but, but do that. Uh, a couple of other things is uh, we, the, the pastor search committee, uh, we have been asking you to do a profile, and you may or may not have done that. Today is the day we need to get that. We have some paper copies available for you. Uh, Lois Webb and uh, Bob Miller will be available to share those paper copies with you. If you need them as you exit, you can get them. Uh, get them back to us. We need them today if possible, and uh, we, we hope you participate. Uh, some of you may have not gone online and done it. You're able to do that. Uh, we encourage you to do that. Uh, this coming Wednesday evening, the search committee will have, be having another roundtable discussion. We're going to begin thinking about and talking about uh, what do you want the next pastor to look like? <laughs> well, you know, what are your expectations? And we hope you, we want to give you a voice. Uh, before we actually begin the search, so we hope you'll be here this coming Wednesday night. We're going to move our evening meal just a little bit earlier, 5.15. We'll begin our discussion at 6, be out by 7, so that the choir can have their practice at 7.30. There will be a vacation Bible school meeting at 4.30 on the 17th, and we hope those of you who are part of that can be available and be present. Did I miss anything? I usually do. I'm glad you're here. May we close in prayer. God, we thank you for your presence with us in this service. We thank you for the testimonies we heard uh, from Caitlin and Cody and for the inspiration they provide each of us to do our part in blessing the younger generation. As we depart from this place today, we pray that you would go with us Give us a wonderful day and protect us as we travel. I pray in Christ's name.